Yo, what's going on, my people? It's your boy, CTG, and I'm back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 5 video. And in today's video, we're going to be putting everything that I've talked about in my past tipped videos together. Uh, I want to I want to show you guys a fight that really is a culmination of everything that I've been talking about in my previous videos. How to counter pressure, how to set up rhythm striking, uh, how to apply pressure. And we're going to see that all put together and all utilized in one fight. Now, the fight that you guys are going to see here is between two of the best players, if not the best players, on the PlayStation 5 side right now in GOAT1099 and Romero17. I've been blessed enough to really be able to spar both of these guys, and I can tell you, it it's ridiculous, man, the things that these guys do in the virtual octagon. So, we're going to watch their very last fight of the, I believe they did a best, a first to three, or a first to four, or something like that, a best to seven, technically. Um, so this is going to be the very, very last fight that they did. They're going to be using Izzy and Alex Pijero right here. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get it popping. And then I'm going to be pausing in between to show you guys really the tips and the to put a little more emphasis on what I was talking about in my previous videos in this video as well. So let's get it. Izzy, turn up, bro. Turn up. Turn up, Izzy. Oh, yeah, you guys are going to hear GOAT1099's commentary, too, because this is from his stream. So, shout out to GOAT. Let's get it. Here we go. All right, now, as you guys are already seeing right here, this is a very, very fast-paced fight already straight off the rip. These guys are not hesitating to throw strikes. Now, this feeds into what I was telling you guys in my previous videos with not only the rhythm striking, but how you can avoid getting pressured in UFC 5. Both of these guys know the second you let your opponent get your block down and you start playing reactionary, it's going to be a problem. So you see Goats popping out strikes, Romero's popping out strikes. The, neither one of them is just standing back and taking strikes and being super defensive because they know... You're not that being super defensive in UFC five right now with the current state of the game is going to mean death. You're going to get finished. I, I promise you, especially against guys like these. So they're firing off shots and they're establishing a rhythm, right? Goats going, then Romero's going, then goats going, then Romero's going. And they're kind of just fighting at a pretty, pretty readable rhythm right now. So you guys are going to see as the fight goes along, how these guys are going to kind of jockey to gain uh, rhythm domination, per se. Okay. Hey. So you see right here, they're 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 starting to throw off a lot of feints. You see them start to faint kicks, the faint leg kicks, and stuff like that. That's their way of changing up the rhythm. You see Romero threw a couple feints before he ended up catching this uh, this teep kick to the body. But Goat's also doing the same thing. They're trying to switch up the the rhythm at which they're fighting to potentially catch their opponent either you know in a bad situation. So that's really why you're starting to see them faint. That's that rhythm change. So if you guys watch this fight live, that's where things kind of get a little hairy. You don't know really the way it's going to go because these guys are starting to change. They're starting to get reads on what, what each other is doing, and they're starting to try to set traps for each other. The other thing that you see Goat doing that he did do successfully, he threw that oblique kick that I was telling you guys about in my Holly home fight. Uh, the oblique kick, it does some nice damage, and it makes your opponent have to take a back step. So he threw the oblique kick and then immediately made the read and went back up to the head. And I believe he actually caught Romero, uh, not heavy, but he did catch Romero slightly. So that's a good read. That's a good way to stop forward pressure that we know somebody that's using Poeton is going to want to do. So he's working the oblique kicks. He's working and switching them into the head kicks. So there's a lot of things that are going on here, ladies and gentlemen, that we've touched on in previous videos that I I really want you guys to notice in this fight. 
beautiful. So see here what's happening what's happening right here is romero's doing a good job of moving laterally and moving forward to try to cut goat off to try to keep him up against the fence so really we're going to see right here what does goat do to get off the cage he has to move laterally he has to do something to get romero's pressure off of him because the more he stays on this cage the higher chance that if he gets rocked he's going to get finished so we're going to see right here what goat does to get off of the cage That pressure. See, he's talking about it. He knows. He knows what Romero's His trying to do. His leg kicks hurt, boy. His leg kicks hurt. Now, see, Goat was able to circle off of the cage just by using the lateral movement and using feints and threatening to strike. So that's a tip that I don't think really I've touched on in a video yet for you guys. But that's a good way to avoid getting pressured is circling off and then threatening to come back with a combination of your own. Uh, that's going to be able to allow you to get that freedom to circle off, especially with the way that the meta is right now in the game. Um, you can circle off and throw off balance shots and while keeping yourself out of range. So Goat did a good job of circling off and then threatening to gain that space back. And now he's pretty much in the center of the octagon now where he really wants to be at. Now, the one thing that Romero did do right there that was very, very good is he started working those leg kicks. And you heard Goat say it. He said, those leg kicks hurt. And the reason why Romero was working the legs is because he knew that Goat was trying to move off of the cage. So in order to try to keep him on the cage, he started throwing those calf kicks, those really, really heavy damaging calf kicks that Alex has in the game. He started chucking them out which is a very, very good read on his part. And even if it doesn't keep Goat up against the cage, it's going to damage that lead leg. It's going to make Goat have to switch, have to stay in a stance that he, he really might not want to be in. He might want to just be switching stances freely. So by chopping at that lead leg, it's going to make Goat have to stay in one stance and that's going to make the reads that much more easier for Romero if he gets him up on the cage. So very, very back and forth fight right here. And both men are doing things to put themselves in better spots. So right here you see, they're still staying in what we like to call neutral. Another good leg kick. Nice calf kick. There's another one. Nice jab hook. Nice, good body kick. Oh. Nice. There was a good one. Romero right there got a nice read. He threw out a strike just to see if Goat would re-engage him. Goat did. He got caught in vulnerability. And that's a good read on Romero's part. And this is where kind of the trickiness between high-level players goes. Because before that rock right here, before this rock right here, there was no established rhythm. So at some point, somebody's going to have to take a gamble, right? And this really paid off for Romero. He made a very, very good and nicely timed read to get this stun right here on GOAT. It's it that's really what high level fights are in UFC 5. It's one player setting something up and having to guess and predict correctly what your opponent is going to do, and then it's going to lead to high, high damaging strikes. So let's see if Romero is able to capitalize on this and what he does if he doesn't uh, not goat or take goat out right here. Oh man, careful. 
So now I want to pause it right here because I want you guys to see, because I touched on this in my uh, Sean Strickland video, the mistake that a lot of people make. You see, Romero didn't back up to reset here, ladies and gentlemen. He stayed literally on the pressure. He stayed in Goat's face because he wants Goat to potentially make, to make another mistake. And Goat knows this. Goat knows this because he does this to people as well. So this is how you want to apply pressure. This is the correct way to apply pressure after you've hurt somebody. You want to stay in their face. You want to keep them as close to the side of the octagon as possible. Because if they make a mistake, like if Goat was to make a mistake right here, Romero is going to press him up against that cage and either start going down to the body or going up to the head with the nice clean mix-ups that Romero has. So this is the proper way to apply pressure. And this is something that we've touched on in a previous video of mine with the mistake that I say a lot of people in the community make. So you see, even the highest level players do the same thing I've been telling you guys. Careful. Ooh. Nice jab hook. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. That was a little shifty kick. Yeah. Yeah. Now you see something that something that's starting to happen right here is now Romero realizes he's watching the clock. There's only 20 seconds left. He knows that he's won this round because he's hurt him, right? He's hurt Goat. Goat knows it too, but Romero knows he doesn't have to take much risks. And this is what this is another tip that I'm going to give to you guys. It once you realize that you've won, you've done a lot of damage in a round, and it's underneath the last minute, you can take a break a little bit. You can kind of just allow your opponent to press forward a little bit obviously don't just let them walk you down and start breaking your block down and stuff like that but be very aware of the time frame that you're in you don't want to take unnecessary risks and that's what Romero's starting to do here he's allowing goat to kind of pressure him a little bit so that goat has to take the risk if goat starts to throw too many strikes he's going to get countered like he did with that right hook and he's going to Eat even more damage than he's already than he already has in this fight so far. Ooh. Ooh. So you, here you see single strikes, nothing, nothing heavy. Here we go. Here we go. And that's the end of that first round. All right, gotta be careful, man. Yeah, he's a water coach. Yeah, he caught us though. We gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Yo, Goat has some of the funniest commentary to his to his streams. I I swear to God, it's it's hilarious, man. Yeah. And look at that! Boom! That was a beautiful head kick right there. That was that was a beautiful head kick. That was set up off the leg kick. So now here in the second round, Goat has to do something because now Romero's landed some heavy damage. So now Goat's going to start to try to make adjustments. Romero's going to make some adjustments too, but he doesn't know what Goat is going to do to change the fight around. So we're going to see here what he does. Here we go. Nice body kick. So now it looks like straight off the rip, Goat is starting to apply a lot more pressure than what he did in the last round. Last round, Goat was kind of, he was here, but then he was okay with playing off the back foot. But he's seen what happened. He's seen the success that Romero had in the first round. So now he's not going to be giving up nearly as much ground. He doesn't want to. He wants to be in that pocket and to keep Romero on that back foot. Because, number one, he doesn't want to get put up against the fence with that power that Poetan has. And, number two, it allows him more 
Octagon to evade if he needs to. Instead of him being put against the fence and then getting hurt and then he's stuck up against the fence. There's only so many things that he could do. And Romero knows that. So Goat is now pressing forward and he's trying to change the rhythm of the fight by controlling more of the octagon. So now you see Romero knows that, so he's trying to regain the center, the control of the octagon as well. He's trying not to give it up to Goat. Ooh. That rear hook did some damage. Ooh, there it was again. And notice how that, that happened. Go back and rewatch that that sequence. Romero literally jabbed, hopped back out, and then guessed and made a correct read again and timed it out perfectly and caught Goat with another clean combination. This sequence was pretty much, obviously other than the combination, was identical to how he stunned him in the first round. He got Goat to, to trigger off of one strike and then caught him in vulnerability. And that's a clean way as a pressure fighter to set up getting your opponent uh, with high damage is to throw a strike out, step back, allow them to react, and then catch them with a combination as you're stepping forward. Very, very viable way to land heavy damage. So good job by Romero. And now look, he's back in the control in the driver's seat of the fight because now he's got go past that black line again. So here we are again. Now Goat needs to do something so that way this round doesn't turn into the first round. So now you see him pressing forward. Oh, yeah. Nice calf kick. But Romero's doing a good job of maintaining that pressure. Good duck under. Now, the thing that Romero's not doing here that he did in the first round is chopping at these legs. He's not chopping at these legs. And I think he didn't chop at the legs because... He In his mind, he thinks that Goat knows that he's going to go down to the legs. And if it gets checked, it's a free check hook for Goat. So if, if Romero kicks the leg and it gets blocked, Goat's going to come back with a, with a check left hook and it's going to be free. Romero's not going to be able to block it. Unfortunately, that's the way it is in the game. But it is what it is. That's the only reason I would think Romero was not throwing that calf kick anymore. Because Goat was in a perfect scenario to get hit with the kick. But, you know, it is what it is. Dang. Goat starting to fight back with the pressure of his own. Switch his stance to give Mero a different look. He's fainting off long distance kicks. Barely missed with that overhand. Nice calf kick. Hey. Now you see here, this this is how much respect that Romero and Goat have for each other. They're both just kind of, they're both don't want to step forward and make a mistake. They're both just kind of jockeying for position right here. And sometimes you'll see this amongst the elite level players. They respect each other enough to just not be trying to walk each other down like that. And Romero knows because he's already got the damage, so he feels comfortable. He stunned Goat, so now it's on Goat to press forward and get some damage off, and Romero knows that. So he knows, hey, I can just kind of stay back because of the way that the round's going, I'm going to win this round because I've stunned and wobbled him. It's on Goat to push the pace and get that damage back. So you see them jockeying for position right here because Goat knows what Romero's trying to do. But he has no choice but to walk forward and try to get some damage off. Uh -oh. Romero made a mistake right there, though. Romero made a really big mistake because he got a little greedy. He got a little greedy and threw that head kick. And now that's allowed Goat to, ch to enter into the pocket and to get that block down. Look at Romero's block right here. He has none. So now he has to move his head. 
So now Goat, it's a guessing game for Goat. Which way is the head going to move? Is it going to go right? Is it going to go down? Is he going to double slip? And all he has to do is make one correct read, and Romero could be in a lot of trouble right here. So let's see the way that this plays out. So Romero was able to circle off and get out of trouble, but it could have been very bad. But now he gets caught, and that was a good job by Goat. Goat did the exact same thing that Romero did to him. He threw out a single strike, lowered the block down, and then immediately shot a three-piece combination that stunned Romero. Very similar. If you go back and rewatch the stuns so far in this fight, they're literally very identical in the way that they were set up. So if you guys don't set things up like this, I would highly recommend that you do so. Uh-oh. So Goat has gotten back into this round because he stunned Romero. He's pressing the pace. Oh, right to the body. Oh, that's straight. Here we go. That was a that was a really good job by Goat there in the second round to fight back because really Romero had a lot of success like he did in the first round early in that second round, but Goat was able to press forward and set Romero up to land a heavy damaging combination and it really really lowered that head head health on Poeton down. So now he's gained momentum. He has a lot of momentum heading into this third round. He really really does. Let's get it. Hey, great fight. I wish you could say great fight still. Let's go, man. It's heating up. It's heating up. This is third round. So here we are again. We're jockeying for that position. Right? Neither one of them can afford to make a mistake. Back to that leg. Nice straight by Goat. And there, there he set him up again. He set him up again, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, I'm not going to go back and rewatch that because of the time of this video. But he set him up again. He threw a jab. Lowered the block down to about 50%. Then threw a two-piece. Blam. He's gotten the stun. He set him up basically the same exact way he did at the end of that second round and look at herb's face herb don't even look concerned he looked like he's wondering what he's going to eat tonight for dinner but right here romero's in trouble that head health is really low and the block is non-existent so this is goat's chance to put romero out now see Right there, Romero made a really, really big mistake. He gambled, and it didn't work out for him because he tried to go for a pull elbow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewind this right here. So we see the setup, and then you see Romero try to pull elbow back, and Goat didn't even throw out a strike, so Goat just hits him with an elbow and knocks him down. Right there, there's a two-piece. Romero tries to hit that elbow, gets hit with an elbow in return. Finish him! Bam, 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 bam. Come there on. It is. And there it is. And that is what that's what happens, man. That's how quickly a fight can end amongst elite level players. But Goat did a really good job of countering the pressure. He did get hurt multiple times in this fight, but he did a good job of of working himself back into the fight by threatening with offense when he was being pressured. And then towards in the middle of that second round, he started to set up Romero as well. He started to be a little bit more offensive. He started throwing that single strike out and then coming through with combinations behind it to get the damage off. And literally in the third round, he did the exact same thing to Romero that he did in the second round. And that really finished the fight because he applied the pressure 
And Romero made a costly mistake and it cost him that fight. It really did. And that's why you apply pressure to people. That's why you stay in their face when you get them hurt. You want them to make a mistake. And everybody makes mistakes. It's not just elite or lower tier fighters or lower tier uh, lower tier ranked opponents and stuff like that. Even the best of the best of the best make mistakes. Goat makes them. Romero makes them. Any fighter in the world makes mistakes. And you want to try to force those as much as possible to get finishes like this. But that's it for the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this fight breakdown that I did with Goat and Romero. Shout out to both of these guys. These guys are both my really, really good friends. So shout out to them. Make sure you go and sub up to their channels. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Is there anything that I need to clarify for you guys on this video? If there is, you know, I'm always willing to do so. If you're new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post UFC content on this channel pretty much daily. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.